Hops and Stocks podcast is presented by 100 Spoke Media Group. We encourage our listeners to drink responsibly. Please note, we are not financial advisors. We do not offer or provide financial advice. I'm Spoke affiliated from the city of Jim. Welcome back to the Hops and Stocks podcast brought to you by 100 Spoke Media Group. This is episode 76. I was about to forget that quick. <laughs> episode 76. Uh, we got special guest, Kathy Del Monte. Um, Kathy is a multi multicultural marketing manager at New Belgium Brewing. Um, and as you can see, we all got the New Belgium. Yeah. We all swagged out. <laughs> yeah, we got Dub up there in the. Oh yeah, let, let me show you the homie too, though. The homie's on the screen. Oh, you got him. <laughs> so it's we all homie. we always appreciate gifts. <laughs> so anybody yeah. that hops on, y'all can send us packages because right now Kathy is in the lead with. Man, yeah, I, I think you were uh, selling yeah. what she sent to us. Huh? <laughs> right. Well, go ahead. It felt like Christmas. It felt like Christmas, Kathy. I was like, oh, man, yeah. yeah. I, I thought it was I thought it was a Sheen package. My daughter had ordered Sheen, so she was expecting her package. And then I, I set it down and you kind of heard like a metal sound. I was like, oh, this this ain't no Sheen. Right. You cracked it open and it, it was just like bruise all in the box. I'm like, oh hey, hey not not just one box, but two yeah, boxes. Yeah. Two right. boxes. So thank you so our, much. Our guy yeah, and, and, the, and the gear too. Definitely. I'm what glad is, you're enjoying. What is Sheen, man? Oh man, yeah. girl clothing, girl clothing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey Sheen, Sheen did not pay a dime to get mentioned on this podcast. Oh yeah, absolutely. True that. True that. <laughs> so we're, gonna, we're gonna keep it moving. Um, <laughs> Kathy, we've actually reviewed a lot of Voodoo Ranger on on the on the podcast. Um, I this Juice Force is one of my favorites. Um, it's one of we, we talk about house beer all the time and. Just a beer that you can just go to the grocery store, pick up, you know, that's not 20 bucks for the four pack and and actually enjoy. And I believe on a previous podcast I mentioned, um, I'm like, damn, did uh did New Belgium get like new head brewers or something like that? Because the quality has seemed to like step up with whatever this brand is. I don't know if it's a series for y'all or, or is this like a new recipe, but yeah, yeah y'all IPAs is, is lightweight fire. Yeah, I think our IPAs are honestly the best. And the data showing it, uh, Voodoo Ranger right now is the number one selling IPA by a lot. And mm -hmm. Juice Force, the one that you have in your hand now, actually last year was the number one launching beer item um, above everyone. So even above non-craft brewers. So it's nice to see that people are really interested in the Voodoo brand. I think it's a fun brand. It doesn't take itself too serious if you look on the IG, it's more like a cartoon type of vibe and the liquid is just phenomenal. That one is a mango-ish IPA. So we're really trying to like play with different sort of recipes. We just launched a fruit punch IPA too, which no the data is also showing that it's selling extremely well. Um, so we're only in March. So obviously we still have a couple more months to go, but we're really looking at how we could diversify Voodoo Ranger into beyond just a uh, IPA. Um, so I think the fruit components definitely help and for the juice as well. Yeah. So tell I mean, us about your background. Like what got you into to the industry? Um, have you always been into craft beer or kind of was it by default since you were working for Voodoo? So I started my career actually at Mike's Hard Lemonade. So not a beer, but close, similar. Um, so I started as a sales rep. So my territory, I'm from the Bronx. I grew up in New York. My territory I was, was saying, I think we can hear that in the, in the vocals. I was like, that sounds like that New York talk. New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I started basically selling Mike's Heart Lemonade door to door at Bodegas, Deli's. In New York is weird, the law. Oh, sorry. The Hello? law is really weird in New York. That was my eight o'clock alarm. You see, I was ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, the beer laws in New York, you're not allowed to sell beer at liquor stores in New York. Beer is only sold at delis, at like a Rite Aid, a CVS. 
Mm. It's really weird. You cannot have beer and alcohol, hard liquor together in New York. So mm. those are basically my accounts uh, running around New York selling Mike's Hard Lemonade. So this was like 2013, 14. I was there for a few years. And then I, our distributor actually asked me if I wanted to work at Heineken. And as a young woman in my career, working for a global company was really an exciting opportunity. So I landed at Heineken about 2016. And it was really an interesting point at Heineken because they were expanding the sales team really rapidly. They were basically looking to hire like 30 people in just the New York area. So this is for the five boroughs. And uh, at Heineken, I was on the off-premise team again. So working with the delis, the bodegas, it was interesting because I'm Dominican and for some reason, Heineken just has a really strong hold in the Caribbean. Like everywhere you go in the Caribbean, there's Heineken. So it was exciting to work for a brand that I saw my whole family drinking and there was, it was more, it wasn't so much selling at Heineken. It was more letting, you know, account owners know about new products that we had, or just kind of showing face and showing support, dropping off swag. So that was a lot of fun, but because they expanded so rapidly and they weren't really innovating at this time, now they have ranch water with Dos Equis, but because they weren't really doing much sales were just stagnant. They actually ended up laying off 15% of the company. So this is now February, 2019. So a lot of people got laid off. I was one of them, Mm. but I wasn't really upset because I had always wanted to be in marketing. Sales was great because it kept me out of an office. I never wanted to work in an office. Um, But at this time I was just wrapping up my master's I did a digital program at Syracuse in digital marketing. So the timing was perfect. I got laid off. And then May 2019, I started at New Belgium as the brand activation manager, which was exactly what I wanted. It's basically instead of field sales, you're doing field marketing. So working with accounts to do sampling programs, working with accounts to do different programs, um, like you know, buy a burger, get a free fat tire. Um, So it was exciting to be able to work these different programs, events, like larger scale festivals. And then in 2021, so it was basically pandemic time. My boss at the time asked if I wanted to move to Atlanta. And basically New Belgium has always really look to increase diversity even before George Floyd's murder they were really proactive in meeting with the folks at Crown and Hops with uh Dr. J who's a huge DEI advocate for craft beer so they had already been working to increase diversity within the craft industry so they sent me to Atlanta to start working with Ale Sharpton who we have a collab beer with now Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've been working with him for almost four years on Piano Keys, which is a delicious stout, 10% alcohol. Oh, I have it right here, actually. I'm sure he'll love the, the plug-in. So yeah, this is I our have, collab with Ale. I have um, messaged him. He's supposed to send us some. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'll see if I have extra. Right now I'm working, actually, on a PR that's, that's- box. Maybe I could, I'll add you guys oh, to the damn. list actually. So you'll get, so this is a PR box I'm working on for, for piano keys. And we're adding some Ugandan chocolate and other brands. Yeah, yeah that's, so, a slick, that's a slick box. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. I'm excited for these to go out. So I've been working with Ale on this collab um, for almost, yeah, two years. Actually, I've been in Atlanta two years this month. But one thing about me is I've always advocated that we need like this separate team that only focuses on multicultural marketing on black, brown, LGBTQ consumers, because a lot of my coworkers are white. <laughs> um, so, you know, sometimes they don't As really are ours. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> they sorry. don't know how to speak to us so sorry to cut you off we gotta we gotta provide doug an exit he has to go pick up his daughter 
So I'm sorry, Kathy. It was so nice meeting you, and I I'm really so appreciate sorry. what you do for the industry. Thank you. It was nice good to, to see you. a woman of color holding it down in the industry. So good job. Keep it up. Thank you. I appreciate right. that. Hey, peace all right, fellas. Good. Thank you, fellas. All right, man. Yeah. All right peace. Um, yeah, so it's been an exciting ride. Basically, January 2022, I got promoted to senior multicultural marketing manager. And aside from me, they actually gave me a team member, an associate to be based in LA. So she focuses heavy on soccer community, Latinos in LA. And then here in Atlanta, I focus a lot on sort of like black tech events, like Render ATL is going to be one of our big events. Um, this year. So it's just really exciting that New Belgium gave me the opportunity to do this. Honestly, it's, there's not many companies who you say, hey, you should create this whole new team and they actually do it. But New Belgium has always been really dedicated to, you know, keeping employees happy and also making sure that we're reaching out to, to other people besides just a typical crap consumer. So it's been a nice ride so far. <laughs> yeah, it's a heck of a journey. What's what's funny is before I got into like the, the heavy crab beers, now it's just on like Budweiser and stuff. I knew about Fat Tire, but Fat Tire was like for like experienced taste buds. That's why I, that's how I ranked Fat Tire. And I didn't know about Hoodoo Ranger, but I knew about this dude. <laughs> I, was like, I, I knew I knew this dude. <laughs> I was talking to somebody today and I was like, You ever heard of Voodoo Ranger? I'm like, nah. But as soon as I said the skull, she's like, Oh yeah, I've seen that before. Like this is iconic. Yeah. Does, yeah. He, does he have a name or is he is he Voodoo Ranger? Is that his name? Yeah, he's he's Voodoo Ranger. <laughs> it's been honestly Voodoo Ranger is what's really keeping business afloat. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Fat Tire has a new branding and a new liquid which is something that really hasn't been done before we basically are not an amber ale anymore fat tire for the longest time was an amber ale it's now kind of this lighter golden ale which i personally think is a lot better because i found fat tire to be really heavy and kind of bready to be honest yeah it was so, yeah i think this <laughs> new liquid is it's already going really well for us and hopefully it continues to cuz I, I love when I go to events and people are like, oh my God, Fat Tire was my first craft beer. Like that's how I learned about craft beer. So it's always fun to hear those stories about people like going to Colorado and putting it in their car, driving it to whatever state they're from. Like people were really <laughs> traveling to get Fat Tire 20, 30 years ago. Wow. So living in Atlanta, um, I'm just a few hours away up here in Nashville. I ain't on front. I am jealous of y'all black craft beer scene. Like it's it's lit. Like y'all have there's a lot of events, um, a lot of unity. And I'm like, man, I just be wanting to hop on a hop on a highway every weekend and just come down there and kick it. <laughs> yeah, Ale just had a really dope event, like kind of like sneakers and beer event, which was fun from what I saw on IG. And then we're also working with Jen Price who does Crafted for Action. So I believe this is the Dang. third or fourth year. <laughs> so that should be fun too. That's in June, if you guys are around. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So many, so many nice events. We have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> we, we gotta, we gotta be the spearhead, man. Somebody had to start it down there in Atlanta. So yeah, yeah I'm gonna true. have to start, start my own brew event. <laughs> last week or something. Yeah. Um, he said so, last week. Man, I'll, you know, I'll work, with, I'll work with the name, you know. Go ahead, we'll, we'll come up with something. Um, as a woman of color, what have been some of your challenges in the industry? I think that before I got to New Belgium, I feel like being taken serious was definitely a challenge. Luckily, at New Belgium, they do really value my opinion, but I feel like in the past at, at other roles, it kind of felt like I was just a number there and then it ended up being true and you know, we all got laid off. <laughs> so I feel like that's been the biggest issue. I can say that where I am now, I'm invited to leadership meetings, which is amazing. Being the only woman of color is definitely a challenge. Sometimes, you know, 
you go to these work meetings or events and it's hard to find someone to relate to and, you know, like a work wife or a work bestie, um, you know, when everyone's from Colorado and I grew up in New York City, like that's so different from Colorado. So I feel like that is a challenge, yeah. Kathy, how was that transition from uh, New York to Atlanta and, and, you know, how do you like working in the two different markets? Yeah, I love Atlanta. I love that it's a slower pace. I, they get mad at me when I say it's a small city, but <laughs> I do find it to be a small city. Like you can get pretty much anywhere in 25 minutes. You could go from Buckhead to Midtown to downtown. And it's not like these long stretches of drives. When I was living in the Bronx and then working in Brooklyn, that's an hour and a half easily. Jeez. So I just like how dense everything is here. Is there is there bad traffic or something in New York? No, I I'm, mean, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say Atlanta because people complain a lot about Atlanta traffic, but I don't think it's terrible. Maybe it's because I'm from New York. <laughs> I was just in New York two weeks ago and that was just straight up culture shock. Like it was my first time there. And um, it's a place that's been like relatively low on my bucket list because I don't want to be <laughs> real talk. I don't want to be you're just totally insulting her home. I'm not insulting her hometown. Like, hey, I, shout out to the BX. Shout out New to York the is I'm, a I'm being honest. I don't like being around millions of people. <laughs> like it's just it's yeah. just um and the one thing that 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 was weird is I stayed at the, the Virgin Hotel. And there was a liquor store like right around the corner. I was like, okay, I'm about to go grab me some brew and then grab like a little bottle of bourbon, right? So I walk in there, I'm looking, I'm looking. I was like, hey man, where's your beer selection? And that's what he told me. He was like, we're not allowed to sell beer in the liquor store. I was like, what? I was like, I've never what's the, heard what's of the it. Rationale, what's the rationale behind that? So I feel like my dad's in the wine industry. I feel like he told me that it had something to do with after prohibition. Um basically in new york you have something called a home d like a home distributor where people can go buy beer it's like a huge warehouse and other like restaurants or delis can go buy their beer from them but yeah it's i feel like it had to be something money related back in like the 40s and 50s and they just haven't changed those laws so we talked about what well, Eric talked about, how lit the beer scene is in Atlanta. So how how is the beer scene in New York? I mean, it's pretty lit as well. I would say that I don't find there to be as many breweries. Atlanta has a lot of small breweries in New York. Obviously, there's no space or something like that. Um, but people definitely gather at craft beer bars. Um, and yeah, it's a. I would say it's a pretty nice scene supportive scene as well um atlanta's just you know easy to to meet people and i feel like bring everyone together because it is a smaller city so we do a little bit of our research kathy and uh in checking out you know your ig it looks like y'all do a bunch of cool events in different locations and i i feel like i even saw some uh you know different musical artists at some of y'all's events Talk about uh, how, how those events come about and what's your role in, you know, yeah. helping with that. So my favorite event that we do is called Lifted Snowfest. It's a event that is trying to break barriers within snowboarding and skiing. As you can imagine, this sport is very expensive and very white as well. So Lifted <laughs> Snowfest. <laughs> I mean... Aims it's in the name, Snowfest. Like, <laughs> I'm like, what, what kind of festival is that, man? Yeah. So Lifted basically brings black and brown people to the mountains. It happens in Big Bear, California, okay. which was a really nice event. We had OT Genesis perform. That I was saw really that. Fun. I was about to say, I, I think I saw that event and I was going to say, did y'all have uh, I'm in love with the Coco? Out yes, there. we did, which was fun. We had DJs all night. We had brands like Sunbomb, Vans came, Burton. They make snowboards. They all came, had a tent set up. We're giving out free goodies. 8686, eight, six, which is another snowboarding brand, gave lessons out. So people got lessons from actual snowboarding and 
skiing professionals, which was super dope. And we just got some great content from it. People were super excited for it. We were supposed to have our second one uh, two weeks ago, but there's been major snowstorms in Cali. So they had to close the roads, only residents could go. But we'll definitely be doing it again next year. And it's just great to see people that look like me on the mountain because there's a lot of events and things that happen in snowboarding that it's it's not like that. Did you get out there? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I, I picked snowboarding because I felt like we have a partnership with Burton. So it made the most sense because that's I'll, I'll be in Aspen as well for another event in two weeks. So I'm picking up snowboarding thanks to work. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Best skiing before. I've been skiing before, man. That ain't easy at all. And cool. I want to go, man. I it, it's on my bucket list to 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 hit some slopes. It's H and S ski trip. Snowboard <laughs> snowboard seems like it's a little bit easier, but skiing <laughs> it ain't I mean, natural, bro. Your legs are like <laughs> beat up. We still got the goggles from the nineties. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh man, we we used to rock those for fashion. Like I had all the Oakleys. Hey E, and when you skiing, man, how you stop is like this. You got to point your feet, your feet like I this. Not, <laughs> it's well, weird. Yeah. I, I'd be straight like whoop. <laughs> you can't because the skis are so long. Yeah. It's like so many, uh, yeah, I'll, leg I'll, just be a, I'll just be in the lodge sipping a cold one while y'all doing y'all's thing. <laughs> You gotta get out there. On I'll, be, I'll be looking tonight. fresh in my ski gear, but you know I'll just be waiting for y'all to get back. Uh, <laughs> I, I was fresh to death, but I was awkward <laughs> in the mug. I was taking lessons with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's um, fun, Kathy. So obviously, your title is multicultural marketing, um, and it sounds like Voodoo Ranger allows you to, you know, pretty much do what you want as far as you know bringing the culture into the craft beer seen um do they have any specific initiatives as it relates to people of color or like you just got free reign to 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 take charge yeah so it's definitely a mix um i definitely have a lot of free reign to work the events that i find suitable for us but also we have initiatives like brood for all which is a program that supports nonprofits. So we let basically an account, so a bar or a restaurant, pick a nonprofit that they want to donate to. And we'll put up signage in the bar, whether it's a poster or a table tent that pretty much lets people know if they buy a new Belgian product, we'll donate $1 to the nonprofit. So, so far um, we ran, when we ran the program last year, we ended up donating about $30,000. So I just went over that program actually uh, yesterday with our program manager who creates all of these and it's going really well. New Belgium in general donates a lot of money to nonprofits. Last year was 1.3 million. Um, so this program brewed for all, it was to pretty much get our accounts to start showcasing that we are a diverse beer company. So it was nice to allow them the opportunity to pick the nonprofit as well. So <clears throat> marketing now, what's the dream position for you? Like what's the, what's the end game for you? Um, you know, I really hope that eventually we stop kind of breaking out like multicultural marketing and then everyone else. I feel like yeah. marketing is multicultural marketing. Gen Z is more multicultural. They're coming up. They're already 21 generation alpha like it's it's already showing that younger kids don't really see this like black and white type of world it's more like oh we're all together like we're all friends so I really hope that that's what happens and it's a conversation I've had with my boss and he agrees as well that he feels like it doesn't necessarily need to be multicultural marketing I feel like I do want to work my way up. CMO would be great, whether it's here or somewhere else. I'm definitely not opposed to change. I welcome it. Um, but yeah, keep working my way up the ladder, the corporate speak, ladder. Speak that into existence. Right. Yes. <laughs> so, Kathy, um, you know, 
we hear about all of these great events down south and out west and everywhere else. Do y'all do anything in the Midwest? Something that we can participate in? Ohio. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, Ohio, Ohio specifically. Ohio specifically. Cincinnati would be great. I, mean, I will <laughs> let you know. Um, well, no, it's not the Midwest, but I do know not Blacktoberfest, the other craft beer. Barrel and Flow. That's in North Carolina. Uh, we're trying to participate with Piano Keys, with Ales Beer there. We do have someone based in Ohio. I'm just not sure how multicultural the events are. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, no, there's no multicultural in Ohio. <laughs> I mean, that, that, they're just ain't, they ain't connected with hops and stocks yet. You put us in the room. There it is. There it is. Mm-mm. Ryan got that connection, Ohio. You said Ryan? Yeah. What's the connection? He's from Dayton. <laughs> wow. I'm, I thought you was, I'm, I'm seriously, I thought you was talking about like some type of beer connection, man. I'm like, <laughs> that's my bad. He, he connected us, so. Yeah, yeah. he true, connected true. us. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. That was a, that was a, good, a good link. Um, yeah, shout out to Ryan, man. Yeah, so what's next for Voodoo Ranger as far as products? Um, I know you mentioned the fruit punch. And secretly... When the box showed up, I was like, please let there be a fruit punch in there. Please let there be a fruit punch in there. I'm not disappointed, but I'm going to go to the grocery store and see if it's being distributed up here. Um, I know you said they're delving into, like, the fruits to to try to, you know, do some different things. Um, what's next for, the, for this series of IPAs? Yeah, so... If you can speak on it. If you can speak yeah, on it. Yeah, I was like, I don't know if I'm allowed to. We have something coming out this year. Okay. I'm going to say this, but I'm not going to say what it is. That is not a beer for Voodoo Ranger brand. So we're still in the beginning. Well, we're almost at the end, but it's going to be released this year. Pretty much a play for like, you know, the FMBs of the world. Uh, so Voodoo's going to kind of be a, a not just the IPA anymore. So. It's going to be a stout. <laughs> Excuse my ignorance. What's an FMB? A uh, flavored malt beverage. So like... Gotcha. Uh, oh, like, oh, like St. Ives? Crooked Ives? <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. They coming out with special brew? <laughs> special, special Belgium. <laughs> I saw St. Ives has a cannabis drink now. I was surprised to see that. I don't know St. Well, did yeah, I, not I think I'm going to pass on all St. Ides products. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave them right where they was at. Kathy, if you want to hear something funny, you ought to check out uh, episode seven of our podcast. We reviewed all malt beverages on that. Was on that, that episode episode. seven? I, th- I think so. <laughs> I can look it up while y'all, while y'all keep chopping it up, but I think it was episode seven. Yeah, we, we, we kind of went off the rails and was like, yo, let's review all malt liquors do you know how hard it is to find malt liquor in like downtown <laughs> nashville <laughs> like Kathy, I, had to go to- I, I, I purposely skipped that podcast i, don't <laughs> want no parts of it. I had yeah, to go to some pretty sketchy on that man. Try you to still get got to drink liquor man. man i can imagine you were sick the next day wasn't you nah, I'm, nah that, it was it actually wasn't, it wasn't that bad, bad. that's the that's the thing and, and no bs it wasn't i, I drank king cobra and I was shocked because I thought it was going to be just straight up rock gut. It wasn't bad. <laughs> it yeah, wasn't. Episode seven. It's called, it's it's called Bad Jig. I'll take a listen. Yeah. I got it. Parts of it. <laughs> so, Kathy, um, we want to allow you to, you know, drop your social media. Um, how can people get in contact with you or if they want to, you know, know about all things Voodoo Ranger? Yeah, so my email address for anyone who wants to reach out is C Del Monte, D E L M O N T E, at New Belgium. And my IG is Kathy with the C dot D. So Kathy dot D. There it is. There Thank it is. You. Check it out if you want to be jealous of, you know, some great beer events. And if your <laughs> city or state doesn't have this kind of stuff. All right. You can live you vicariously. You don't live care. in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's the only city that I really, I mean, I, I guess every almost everybody that we follow, like drought season and all them, like they're in Atlanta. Um, it seems like Atlanta has the biggest like black craft beer scene. 
Um, yeah, yeah, and it's consistently something like you said. He all the time. You see yeah, all the time. Nice events going on down there. Yeah, I gotta make it down there more. Yeah, and it's nice to see the local craft breweries too partnering with people that live in Atlanta. So Jen Price, the founder of Crafted for Action, did a beer recently with a local brewery. Ale is always working with local breweries, which we love and appreciate because it just helps us even more too. So it's nice. Yeah. I reached out to him, so hopefully we can get him on. Yeah, we gotta we gotta get him on. And he owes us some piano keys, like you said. <laughs> he would love it. I'm working on these boxes, so I'll get them to you guys. I just have to fill them up with a few more products, and then I'll probably send them out in the next few weeks. So I have oh, your man. addresses. That's, that's <laughs> love. That's love. She's about to be the pod favorite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, might, you, might, you might get an invitation to be the fifth member, Kathy. <laughs> you making it real hard for any future beer industry guests? Like, Come on. If they, if, hold on. You they have practice. to send you beer, though. I feel like that's step one. Well, um, Ryan, Ryan did send it to Will. Yeah, Ryan did, but he sent it to him, and he didn't share with us. <laughs> yeah, we was we was jealous too. I'm like, man, hey, it man. was New Belgium, right? Yeah, he got the he got the entire twelve. <laughs> we was like, oh, nice. Should have told me, I would have hooked <laughs> it up. <laughs> nah, we here now. It's all it's all good. She's gonna be calling. She's gonna be like at events, like Kathy. You're supposed to be on the podcast. Like, <laughs> <laughs> step away from your event and then hop on. <laughs> Well, Kathy, we want to thank you for joining and taking time out to, you know, hop on a podcast and share your background and um, talk about Voodoo Ranger. Like I said, uh, with these new IPAs, it was, I was kind of like shocked um, when I was trying them because I'm a person, when I go to the grocery store, if I just see something, I'm like, oh, I'll try that. And I was like, this is actually good. It's good. And I was like, this is actually good. And I'm, we're not just saying that because you on the pod. Like, I meant, you go back and reference, some of my older pods, like we speak highly of Voodoo Ranger. Um, so congratulations to you for everything that you're doing as far as pushing the brand, um, yeah. the company, as far as, you know, developing good beer that people, you know, want to drink, especially people who are kind of like myself. Like I consider myself to be a beer snob. So it's like, eh. he is, he really is <laughs> like, like grocery store beer. Like, no, I don't want that, but yeah, it's, it's legit. Nice. Yeah, we actually just bought a third brewery from Corona, from Constellations, to start producing more Voodoo Ranger. That's how well it's selling. Like, it's wow. it's on fire, the brand. Yeah, we're going to definitely be on the lookout for the Fruit Punch one. Yeah. I'm yes. a, is, do you know if it's been distributed yet? So it, it's been out there um, for sure. I'm trying to think if it's in the variety pack, but I don't think it is, actually. Um yeah, it's it's out there. If okay. you go to our website, you could look for it actually um, in the finder. And it's, and it's pretty. A, accurate. It's still an IPA, fruit punch IPA, is it? Yep. I'm just making sure you ain't trying to slide out of that malt beverage. Yeah, we we are looking to do beyond beer, is what the category is called because. Data showing that also these young kids aren't really drinking that much. Yeah, so we're trying to prepare to. ourselves. Man, that's because <laughs> like, oh, like, oh, man. What in the world are you? No, nah, they are, man. That's facts, man. Like <laughs> we went a whole pile with nothing controversial. And then you man, got... I'll beep, I'll beep it out, man. I'll beep it out. But that's the truth, man. Like kids don't drink because they're doing other stuff. They like they like seltzers though. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like seltzers, other stuff. This all right, man. I'll, I'll keep up. You just re you repeated it. Now you got to beep it twice. <laughs> hey, man. What are we doing here? Stop. Stop. Yeah, man. All right. Thank you, we guys. Want, I appreciate it. Yeah, we want to thank you for joining, and we want to thank you guys for tuning in and watching episode seventy six. This is the hop. Why am I stuttering, man? Take 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 two on the on the exit <laughs> once again thank you for joining hops and stocks podcast episode 76 we are out see you next week peace be a shell of a man if we ever depart from our heart to i'm riding with you i'm riding with you